Welcome to this podcast designed to prepare students to master the 2013 Washington State Biology End of Course Assessment. I hope that whether you're a student, a parent, or an educator, you'll get a lot out of tuning in. The main goals for this podcast are to, uh, one, become familiar with the types of situations that will be featured on the EOC. Uh, Secondly, to closely examine a practice scenario and evaluate where and how points can be earned. And lastly, to become aware of the common ways to earn points and pitfalls to avoid that might cost students points when answering this type of short answer prompt. The topic for this podcast is strategies for responding to a test solution prompt. Beginning with the class of 2015 and beyond, students will be required to pass the biology EOC as a graduation requirement. So this makes uh, this podcast um, hopefully helpful for a lot of people. There are three types of question categories on the EOC. There are multiple choice, completion, and short answer questions. The short answer questions comprise about 20% of the total test, so this would be a good place for students to uh, brush up before they take the test this spring. So of the seven short answer types, the test solution is our focus for uh, this podcast. And before we go on, just to make sure that we understand some of the vocabulary used in the uh, EOC prompt and the rubric, uh, a test is a procedure or a set of steps used to establish uh, a quality or performance or, or reliability of something. It's usually uh, done before taking that uh, something to a larger scale. For example, testing a new computer application before going public. The solution is the correct answer to a puzzle or a problem. And then a data refers to facts or statistics collected for reference, analysis, or study. So for this uh, test solution prompt, there are a total of two attributes. So those are things that students need to be able to respond to. And if uh, both attributes are scored, then uh, two score points are awarded. So the first attribute deals with the method for testing solutions. So here the EOC is really testing to see if students can think about the plan that they need to do for testing whether uh, either a solution A or a solution B is more effective at solving a problem. So really you're contrasting two different possibilities and considering which one might work better in solving a problem. And then the second attribute would be uh, data to be collected. So you're not asked to imagine or dream up data that you might uh, get, but you should be able to describe the kind of data that you would expect to collect. So this would be typically the, the responding variable. Uh, it's the it's the effect to the cause and effect relationship. So did you describe the data to be collected to determine which of the solutions would be better? And with that in mind, if you were to do the uh, test solution in real life, then you would know specifically what you're looking for. So do you have the ability to think ahead and um, anticipate what you would be collecting data for? So uh, this particular practice scenario was given on a recent EOC uh, exam and was released by OSPI. And you'll see that there's a, a, a prompt here beginning with Jose and Tasha and it talks about their need to increase the amount of blueberries that were produced in their neighborhood garden. And then it goes through the problem and then researching the problem all the way down to the plan summary. And then you'll notice that this table shows various things that blueberry plants need to live. And so as we look at this particular test solution prompt, we're really going to be looking at different ways that we could imagine increasing the blueberry plant production, um, provided that the first uh, solution here in terms of uh, worms that was originally suggested by Jose and Tasha. If that doesn't work, then what else could you do? So here's their steps to the plan and they have a little picture showing the setup. And uh, again, this is uh, testing whether or not more blueberries would be produced if they added worms to the soil. And so you'll see that here. So they research the problem initially and then explore their ideas. And in this case, instead of adding worms, they are adding either A option, uh, the automatic sprayer, or the B option, uh, grow lights to artificially lengthen the day. So you're supposed to describe a way to test whether the sprayer or the grow lights would be more effective at producing more blueberries in this garden. So this is how um, they could potentially be scored. So here's a student response, uh, Juan and Tasha, could divide the neighborhood garden into two sections. In section A, they would set up an automatic sprayer that would be set up on a watering schedule. 
of 20 minutes twice per day, one in the morning at 8 a.m. and one in the evening at 8 p.m. And they'll do so for four weeks. And then at the end of every week, they would count the berries from 10 random bushes and then they would average those counts at the end of the four weeks. And so here the manipulated variable or the cause would be the sprayer system. The responding variable would be the counting of the blueberries. And then there's this sense of counting over time and averaging. And then in section B of the garden, they would set up these grow lights and they would be scheduled to add four hours of daylight starting at dusk. And then they would also go for a total of four weeks and again, 10 random bushes would be counted every week and that they would total all the berries and average them at the end of the four week span. And then here's the key thing. So as the student experimenter or responder to the EOC prompt, um, you should anticipate that you would compare the average number of berries in section A produced by the sprayer and section B produced by the uh, grow lights. And then you would go on to say whichever section produced more berries is the more effective solution for growing more berries in the neighborhood garden. So while you don't have, actually have to do this solution, you should anticipate or think ahead of well, what would you expect Juan and Tasha to be able to do to know for sure which of the solutions was best. So this is really part of what's called the technical design solution. And there's a mul multiple step process, basically uh, thinking ahead of, you know, here's the problem. Here's some various solutions. What are some possible alternatives to solving the problem? You test those alternatives and then you come up with the best alternative based on what the data show. And so this is really kind of a, a representation of that style of problem. So one point response doesn't do both of those attributes. So in this case, uh, Juan and Tasha, they divide the neighborhood garden into two sections as stated before. And then they talk about the section, second section, section B, setting up the grow lights, but they don't really talk about the, the specific data that they will be collecting. So all they said is that Juan and Tasha will see which section is better. So that's a very vague answer. So they receive only one point out of two points because they talk about their method, but they don't talk about the data. And in a zero point response, there is a little bit of description about what they would do. Again, a division of the garden into two sections, A and B. And then they would set up um, very, very briefly described here an automatic sprayer system in one and then grow lights in another. But they don't really talk about how long they would do the test, when they would measure for blueberries, how would they measure for the blueberries, would it be randomly or would it be chosen um, at the beginning of the experiment. So it's very, very vague on the details. And so in this case, they didn't really describe clearly the method that they would use or the data that they would be expecting to collect. So really need to have both method and data. And if you have the method clearly described, but not the data, that's one point. And if you have the data clearly described, but not the method, that's still one point. And if you have neither, then it's zero. So this kind of ESC prompt is pretty straightforward. And really it's going down to answering the prompt as you see presented for you. So there's not much memorization to do, but really it's critical thinking is how would you set up a problem with multiple possible solutions? So some takeaways as we wrap up with uh, this podcast. Uh, some students tend to only address one of the solutions. So they may only talk about, say, the automatic water spraying system, but not the uh, artificial grow lights. And then also students tend to believe that if one solution works, then the other one should also work, which may not always be the case. And then another takeaway is that um, students immediately make a prediction about which would be better rather than describing the way that they would determine which is better. And so you have to go through that stepwise process of implementing the solution, collecting data at various uh, preset times, averaging, recording the data, comparing the data between solutions A and B, and then the data will actually determine which is the better solution. And then remember to describe the data that needs to be determined. So be very specific with the responding variable and what you think that should be. So this wraps up our uh, podcast for today. I appreciate uh, you joining in. In this podcast, you should have seen that the uh, test solution short answer item prompt has two attributes, and you need, must score both of them to earn maximum points. Uh, you saw three sample student responses, each of which earned various uh, scores from two points to zero points based on how well they match the rubric. And then finally, you learned how to avoid some simple mistakes that might cost you points when responding to this item type.
Please direct any comments or questions to me at the email address provided on the screen. Good luck and I hope this helped.